Hi all, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying another wee crayfish pattern. It's a very simple little fly. It's just a felt crayfish. Um, see this in a one out my box, I'm refilling and I thought it'd be a good one to show you. Um, as always I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content and be eligible for the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos. That's all appreciated. So I've got my hook and my vice. This is a size 6 uh, Varivas 2500V SE. Um, it's a heavy wire, long shank, straight eye hook. Right, any straight eye will do for this. Um, and I've just started some olive thread. This is just uni. And we we'll get some lead dumbbells in black. Tie them on. Oops. About an eye width back from the, the hook eye. Take wraps over over the eyes and under the shank, and then under the eyes and over the shank to tighten everything up. Now you can probably still move them at this stage if you really need to. Just check they're sitting how you want. And then I'm going to run my thread all the way down the shank. I'm going to come slightly round, slightly round the bend. It's about there. I'm going to tie in a bunch of marabou here. Um, This is just a bit of, provides a bit of movement at the back of the fly. I'm going for a brown olive, and I want it something like that, like a bit of a shank to a hook length. Catch it in. Just tidy up all that waste. I can just cover it up. If there's any really long fibres will take them away, but I'm quite happy for it to be sort of rough like that. And then I'm going to get some silly legs. And this here is it's actually a spinner bait skirt. Um, I don't know how well you can see on the camera, but unlike the sort of fly tying legs, this is actually like fused in the halfway up. It's connected there as well, um, because that would be where you would attach it on a a jig or a spinner bait. But use whatever legs you like. I like these because they're flat. So I'm going to take two. Now, if I was using like an ordinary set of fly tying legs, I would just put a single leg off and cut it in half. And then I'll turn the hook upside down. And I'm going to offer in these first set a good bit longer than the marabou. Oh, I need to move my thread. Do that again. First set I like to be a good bit longer than Marabou, something like that. Coming out mm, half a shank or so beyond the Marabou. And then I'll fold the tag ends back. Just watch your hook point. Especially these Varavas hooks are viciously sharp. Um, 
I'm just going to cinch that back to the tie in point. Now, the two folded ones, I want them, looks like that, put to the side a wee bit, and I'll make them slightly shorter. Put that back a wee bit. So there's a decent distance, a decent difference in length, um, so that they don't clump together, they move independently. Now, I'm going to come back, and you've seen me doing this before with dumbbells. Take another set of wraps. Just to secure everything. Again, right, this this really, really stabilises the eyes because you've got all that extra grip for your, you know, you've run your thread up and down the shank, everyone's gripping, it's far less likely to move. And then just to be extra sure, I'll get a bit of glue. Just Now, I need some dubbing. I'm using the hair's ear and wiggle dubbing. It's the it's hairline stuff. It's um, the wee micro rubber legs in, which I quite like. But you could use anything, it doesn't matter. And you're going to need a lot of it. So. Get this dub and come back up under here. Get a decent bunch from the bend to about the hook point. And then I'll grab my rib, which is going to be a length of nylon or uh, whatever, fluorocarbon. Something like four to six pounds. There's plenty. Take my thread down. I'm going to fold that over and then tie back. And I'll trim away my waist. And that way it'll never slip out, never pull free. Come in with the dubbing again, and as I say, you've got to use a lot of dubbing on this fly. Don't be too fussed about getting the dubbing very tight either. Um, you see when I rub it that it will sort of pull in. I'm going to let, sort of double up the rib. Um, we'll take extra wraps with the ribbon, and you want to build quite a fat body. See him putting a lot of dubbing on this. Because it's got to be, you've got to have enough body to support the felt back. Um, although I'm actually starting to think you could leave the felt back off and it would work just as well, if no better. But. I'll show you the pattern as I've been tying it for however many years now. Take the dubbing right through the dumbbell eye and then 
got a piece of felt here. It's just like cheap craft felt. And it's basically a hook gap and width. I'm going to knock the, end, the corners off one end. So it's kind of round. Oh, and I've marked it with some permanent markers. I've just mottled it, sort of brown and maybe wee bits of red or whatever. I don't know that it makes a great deal of difference, but it sort of dulls it down a wee bit. Put a hole right in the middle, about eight mil centimetre maybe back. Slide the hook through. Get that in. Get the hook back in, get it nice and secure. Don't pull that too tight. If you pull it too tight, you see you do that. And it'll actually probably cause it to start tearing when it gets wet and dries. Just have enough tension, or a, almost no tension, just enough to let, have it sitting basically parallel to the hook shank. So I'm going to take just a wrap with the rib under, and then I'll take it over the top, make sure it's sitting where I want it. I'll do it. I'll lift this up and I'll take another wrap underneath. Then I wrap over. Another one under. And this means that my wraps over the over the back are straight and the sort of spiral is going under the under the felt. Which is also obviously reinforcing the body that wee bit more. This one right behind the dumbbells. Lift it up. Catch the rib. Got to tie this right down to the eye and fold it back and tie over it. Come in with the heavy scissors and take it away. And I'll take my thread, secure it, get a few turns of thread on there. Now I'll cut this just beyond the eye. I'm going to knock the corners off. Just sort of round it off a bit. Something like that. And then I'm going to grab another pair of legs. Same ones. Um, now the reason I like these legs actually is because they're flat, they're, they're a bit flatter than the fly tying legs. Um, and obviously being silicon, same as the silly legs, they're buoyant. But they, when they've been flat they, they sit really nicely um, on this fly. But, I mean you can make another leg sit, it's not the end of the world if you don't have these. So. Catch these in on top. Try to get them to sit slightly off of each other. Hope you can see that there. They're not right hard against each other. And the set that's aiming towards the back, I'm going to trim them in line with the back of the body 
And then these front pair, put it fold over. Trim it in line with the back of the hook. And we can get the one on the offside. Just cut it the same size. Pop up finish in here. And cinch it a wee bit. And then I'll come in. finish in there as well. So there you have a deadly wee crayfish fly. No claws, right? A fly without claws will sink better and probably catch you more fish. Um, I mean, crayfish use their claws to defend themselves and threaten the bass with that are trying to eat them and sometimes it will work with the big crayfish this just looks like one that's injured lost a claw in a fight or whatever or no get any claws the bass has no reason not to attack it just using the velcro to pull the rubber legs and some of the dubbing out we could look a wee bit buggy Probably along the bottom. And then to secure your whip finish, it's got a healthy shot of varnish. Just let it get into that dubbing as well, it doesn't do any harm. All you need to do is make sure your eyes clean. And the fly's done. So there you go, that's my felt back crayfish, I don't really have a name for it, but uh, certainly, certainly a smallmouth killer, um, served me well for a while, works for largemouth as well, you might want to put a weed guard on it and a bigger hook, but there you go. So I hope that was useful, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines guys, bye.